Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Attribution 2014 webinar series. This is installment number one of a five webinar series establishing your game plan. A few administrative items before we get started. Everyone should be in listen only mode. Um, however, we do encourage you to submit questions via the chat box and we've saved some time at the end to address those questions. Uh, if we don't get to all the questions or if there's questions that uh, need more specific follow-up, uh, we'll definitely pull those together and get them out to everyone. Likewise, we are recording this session and we will post it later this week on our website. Um, so if you miss any part of it or you want to share it with some friends, feel free to do that. My name is Casey Carey. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at Adometry. My Twitter handle is at Casey Carey. And uh, if you would like to tweet about this webinar, I guess I would recommend either using the hashtag attribution or hashtag measure um, to do that. Once again, thanks for joining us. And um, we're real excited about this series. First uh, word from our sponsor, Adometry. Adometry is focused on powering more intelligent marketing, uh, really building advanced marketing and attribution solutions, leveraging the marketing data that's available, and helping over 75 brands and their agency partners uh, drive greater business outcomes through that intelligent marketing. Our primarily uh, the verticals we serve are auto, telecom, cable, technology, travel and leisure, financial services, and retail. So without further ado, let's dive in. Uh, this series is a five-part series. This is ser um, session number one, and it's really mapped to a playbook that we've put together um, to help our customers and prospects take the journey to advanced attribution. Uh, the five parts are composed of setting your direction. So that's what we'll talk about today in terms of what are your objectives, taking on it and planning and implementing a cross-channel marketing Attribution solution can seem like a daunting task, um, but with a proven playbook, some forethought, and available resources, you definitely can ensure success um, with this initiative. The second session is scheduled for January 9th, and we'll get invitations out for that shortly. Um, but that one's going to be focused on what we talk about building trust, trust in the data. Um, it's important that your measurement framework, your measurement foundation, um, is trustworthy. And so we'll talk about uh, the data required to build a solid foundation for your attribution initiative. The third session is focused on clarity. So using an advanced attribution model, what types of insights, um, what types of questions can you answer? Uh, what kind of data will you have available to help drive your business? What's that new truth gonna look like? The fourth session will be focused on action. Uh, based on those insights, that clarity, that new truth, what types of actions um, should you take? How does optimization, predictive optimization come into that, both at the strategic and tactical level, as well as what are the opportunities to operationalize attribution results into your marketing uh, ecosystem? And then finally, the fifth session uh, will be a session of case studies where we'll talk about specific results that uh, our customers have realized um, from taking on this journey. So the agenda for today's session is, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the opportunity, the opportunity at hand, um, and some reasons why uh, you may wanna consider doing something different than your current approach. Talk about laying out your game plan. So what do you hope to achieve? And um, what does that look like? Scripting specific plays, I'll walk you through a framework of six, six specific areas where uh, you should think about, ask questions, and define um, what you hope to achieve in each of those areas. And then I'll talk a little bit about what the potential payoff is um, once you've completed this journey. If it uh, sounds like somebody's not on mute, if everybody could please make sure you're on mute, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, so quickly, a bit about me. Uh, for the last 20 years, I've had a passionate pursuit of making marketing better, um, whether that's through technology, data, services, processes, et cetera. Excited to be here at Adometry. Um, great company with great people and even more so getting a chance to work with some great brands and some great agencies and, and kind of continu continuing this, this passion and journey of mine around um, improving marketing. 
Interestingly, one of my claim to fames is I invented attribution. Uh, a little bit of an algorithm, uh, but uh, a little over a decade ago, I worked for a company called DoubleClick, and we launched a product called Channel View. And Channel View really solved a very simple problem, and that was, especially retail and catalog marketers, uh, were sending out, you know, tens of millions of catalogs, uh, spending 5x that in money um, for that marketing. And as e-commerce was starting to ramp up, they started seeing performance of their direct mail channels fall off. Uh, of course, it was channel shift in most cases. Um, people now getting catalogs and going to e-commerce sites and buying things. But they really couldn't understand the relationship between uh, the marketing event and the response event. So Channel View was designed to simply match back catalog mail files to e-commerce transaction files and do the analysis as to which e-commerce transactions were actually dr directly driven from uh, the catalog, which really is a microcosm of a much more complex problem today um, as we look at attribution. Interestingly, uh, the internet was called the internet, the, the information superhighway 13 years ago, attribution was called demand allocation. Um, so the names have changed and the problems are actually much, much bigger. Uh, in a more recent life, uh, I was running a $85 million e-commerce business, Libras.com, and I was living in Last Click Hell. Uh, we were using our web analytics tool, uh, Last Click model, uh, to measure marketing performance. And um, as you can imagine, uh, each channel um, had its own metrics. Uh, paid search was being man managed on return on ad spend. Email was using an ROI metric. Um, our affiliate channel, which was a large channel, was uh, measuring on cost per action. We tested retargeting using holdout panels. We tested display. We tasted, tested Facebook. Um, all those channels proved to have significant incremental lift. Um, the challenge was I couldn't get the incremental budget because I didn't know where to take the money from. If those channels were lifting response, which channels were actually underperforming? And clearly the last click model um, was unable to give me a true view into that performance. Uh, likewise, um, it was built into our financial and reporting systems, our budgeting processes, every aspect of our business was built on this foundation of the last click model. Um, so change was hard. And you know, it was a situation where we were focused on highly optimizing each of our channels on a last click basis, knowing that we were leaving uh, significant opportunity, significant money on the table by not being able to uh, move to a full funnel view of our, our marketing performance, as well as leveraging some of the other channels that and tactics that would perform better in upper and mid funnel um, opportunities. Um, so I'm sure many of you have lived that experience or are currently living that today and can appreciate that. So you kind of pile on top of that kind of the status quo. Um, you know, there's definitely forces um, and pressures on marketers that are making the opportunity even greater. One is, you know, a lot of pressure to become data driven. And really, you know, whether you call it big data or something else, the notion there is to find ways to strategically leverage um, all the data that is now becoming available uh, in marketing to drive even better results. And there's many ways to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, many organizations are now looking at this as a strategic opportunity to create a competitive advantage. At the same time, we want to understand the customer journey, but it's becoming much more complex. Uh, not only are there more channels to deal with, um, adding kind of mobile and social to the mix, along with the traditional digital channels and offline channels, um, but also now the way consumers are actually interacting with those channels, being less channel centric, um, using multiple channels am along the journey um, is becoming much more challenging. Kind of pile on top of that, uh, now the adoption of mobile tablet technology. So not only are they using multiple channels, they're using multiple devices on that journey. Um, so we'd love to really have a good understanding as to kind of what my top converting paths are, um, how devices play a role in that, where opportunities are, um, but definitely getting the insights to understand that um, has become a big challenge. 
And then the final one is really being multi-channel in our approach. Uh, we all talk about this. Um, we all aspire to be it. Um, but many organizations still organize and measure in silos um, and are really not able or at this point capable of uh, optimizing across all those channels um, specifically. So we'll talk more about that. At the end of the day, the opportunity is actually pretty simple. How do we create a better understanding of the connection between marketing and results? So let's dive into that. Uh, so in terms of laying out the game plan, really simple, start with the end in mind. Uh, you know, it's, it seems simple when you say it, but uh, I see a lot of, um, a lot of times where companies dive into a technology solution and really don't take a step back and ask some of the key questions. And really pretty simple questions, but getting to the answers are sometimes quite hard. One is, you know, kind of what are my primary objectives? Um, I'm going to make this investment of time and resources. What is it I want to get out of this? Um, what specific things, uh, what's the scope of the effort, and what specific things do I hope to achieve? A big part of this, you know, more so than technology, is the implications in terms of uh, the organization, both internally and externally. So who are my key stakeholders? Uh, the finance department, my marketing analysts, my channel managers, my agencies. Uh, you know, who are all those key stakeholders that need to be part of this process, need to have input into the process and have buy-in um, because it will ultimately impact uh, what they do and how they do it. And then at the end of the day, what does success look like? And not that, you know, um, standing on the podium with the gold medal type of success, but what are the incremental steps along the way? Um, what do I need to achieve in what time frames? And ultimately, it's an evolution rather than um, a revolution. And what is that path to that end goal? As part of that, too, is really, you know, almost asking, you know, what are the current challenges that I have? Um, you know, if I could wake up and create my utopian uh, scenario, what would that look like and what's keeping me from doing that? What questions do I have that I don't currently have answers to? And typically when we talk to customers and prospects, um, these kind of fall into three camps. One is uh, the marketing executive who's really focused on the big picture. Um, and some of their challenges are you know, all their channels are being managed in silos um, and they would really like to see all their data and all their results in one place. And, you know, and short of some uh, spreadsheets and a lot of time, it's really hard to get that data pulled together. You know, one of my favorite questions I get is, what would happen if I had more or less budget? What would I do with that budget? Where would I invest with it? And what kind of return could I expect from that? It's a really hard question, but a very important strategic question to be able to answer. Uh, what are my top performing investments? What are my bottom performing investments? Uh, we feel like we're managing, um, you know, our portfolio of investments all the time, trying to get a couple basis points of improvements. Um, but do I really understand within that portfolio where my opportunities lie? Am I reaching the, the right audiences across channels? If I'm focused on marketing within a channel, how does that look across those channels, both in terms of audience and overall performance? Uh, what are my top converting paths? What are my top uh, touch points along that journey to conversion? Big ones are social and mobile. How are they playing in, the, in that journey? Uh, what's the ROI on social? What's the role in mobile? And are those investments winners or am I doing it just because I think I need to at this point? And then finally, how can I be more accountable for marketing's contribution to growth? Uh, you know, creating that strategic vision of marketing um, as a revenue driver versus just an expense line and really having a nice accountable story around um, that connection between marketing's investments and the impact on the business. For the marketing manager, this is where it's it a little challenging attribution because, um, you know, everybody's in their comfort zone. Uh, optimizing their channel using their metrics and their approaches and now all of a sudden um, being asked to kind of perform as a team and drive greater results across the entire uh, marketing mix. 
So really questions around what other actions can I take to improve performance? Um, I have a limited view of my performance based on my current attribution model. So what other, what other opportunities exist? How does my channel interact with other channels? Um, and I need to be able to trust those results and understand that those are actually happening. Um, obviously, even if I'm doing paid search or affiliate, um, I'm focused on bottom of the funnel uh, returns if I'm using last click. So what are the opportunities uh, for search terms, keyword groups, and affiliates um, that drive top of the funnel or middle of the funnel performance and how do I take advantage of those? Am I over invested in some of my bottom of the funnel investments? And then finally for the marketing analyst, really getting access to the data across the channels. You know, today's approach for many analysts is a lot of data extracts, Excel, and a bunch of time. Um, so can I get all that data in one place, get it out of the silos? Um, do I have a unified view of marketing performance, unified metrics? Um, can I bridge the gap between online marketing and offline results? Um, and really helping me move the business forward in terms of having the data available to make decisions, being more agile, and being more responsive to business needs. So let's talk about uh, a framework for things you need to consider as you uh, go along this journey. I created a framework that's called the Six Pillars of Marketing Performance, and it's really designed to kind of help you assess your status quo and then think about what you aspire to achieve as part of that journey and, and the requirements to achieve each of those levels. Um, so let's talk a little bit about assessing your current mindset in each area. The six pillars are data collection and integration um, is the first one. And it's really focused on my current marketing data, my marketing performance data. Where does it exist? Um, is it in silos? Am I able to bring that data together? Um, is it structured in a way that I can actually make sense of it, normalize it, rationalize it? Um, so where are you at in that journey is kind of a great starting point in terms of uh, thinking about what you need to accomplish. We see companies that are in various degrees of sophistication along the spectrum. Um, it may be in total in silos or maybe a couple areas where they've pulled the data together um, or there's others who have done a great job of pulling this data together, but um, something to think about. Overall performance metrics, I talked about this earlier. Um, you know, it makes sense to have unique metrics within each channel to measure performance and optimize performance. But if you take a step out of those channels, what's that unified metric um, or metrics? And at what level do those um, exist um, in terms of uh, are they value-based? Are they tied to business outcomes, et cetera? What's my approach to budgeting and objectives? Um, typically what we'll see today is it's channel focus plans based on channel performance. Um, you know, paid search has a ROAS hurdle of six. Um, so based on that, we can set the budget and kind of know what our, our conversions are gonna be from that channel. Is that how we're thinking about um, budgeting for each channel? Data analysis insights is the fourth pillar. Uh, individual channel analysis using arbitrary attribution. So whether it's last click, first click, um, even time decay, U-shaped, uh, whatever you want to call them, name them. Um, you know, do I have the analysis and insights to really understand what true performance is within and across each of these channels? Ongoing optimization. So really, as we talked about earlier, um, we tend to be focused on optimizing individual channels within those channels. Uh, when I was at Libris, if we got a couple basis points of improvement on any one channel, you know, we were slapping high fives and going out to lunch. Um, really, most companies are in this kind of this state, this current mindset uh, of really hit diminishing returns within each channel um, from an optimization perspective. And then really from a, an adoption and oper operationalization standpoint, um, they've hit the wall. Um, kind of increasing maturity and sophistication is not a priority, right? We've hit diminishing returns. Um, we're hoping that other new products or other things can help lift performance. Um, obviously, we got to continue to work hard within our existing channels. Google's changing the rules all the time. There's new competitors. There's new ad formats. So the world we live in is very dynamic, and we have to continue to manage that actually just to stay even. Um, but really, that's where we're at. 
Um, and as a result, you know, we kind of hit that wall. And it's it's really hard to make a step function improvement. And unfortunately, we spend a lot of our time um, trying to stay even or just small incremental improvements. So as we talk a little bit now about the aspirational mindset. So, you know, there's varying degrees uh, that uh, you can aspire here. Um, and I wouldn't advocate, you know, kind of going for uh, touchdowns in every one of those six pillars, but really think about moving the ball forward in, in at least multiple areas um, to have an impact on the business. So moving my marketing data so I can have a single view across the channels and maybe not out of the gate, that's not all the channels, um, but definitely the big ones that matter, um, where could I benefit from having a view of performance across each one. From a performance metric standpoint, uh, creating those unified metrics, a both being value-based, so it's not action-based, uh, click-through rates or cost per action, um, but they're value-based and, and driving as much of the co associated cost into those equations as, as we can. Um, in the next uh, webinar, we'll talk both uh, about data collection and performance metrics much more so, but in terms of cost, is it you know, including more than media costs, including platform cost, agency cost, people costs, so that if you're comparing the performance of paid search to display to email to social, um, it's on an apples to apples basis um, because each of them have different cost structures associated with them. And it's important to understand that. And ultimately, making sure you have a clear line of sight from your business goals, your business outcomes to the metrics that you've defined. Budgeting and objectives. Um, so really, you know, at the end of the day, if you implement an advanced attribution solution, how do you foresee kind of setting your cross-channel objectives and budgets based on maximizing overall results? Uh, this gets hard for some companies um, just because, you know, used to doing it a certain way and now all of a sudden the basis of performance has changed. Um, and, you know, people take budgets personally. Um, so really kind of changing the point of view, changing the paradigm um, that we're going to reallocate budgets, we're going to change investments um, to maximize the overall results, and that's not bad. That's not a reflection on any one person. It's actually a great achievement for the overall marketing team. Data analysis and insights. Uh, so really, um, you know, a lot of the attribution models today are uh, arbitrary, whether it's last click, it's also click-based. Um, so really bringing into a full funnel view, cross-channel view of performance. Uh, so I want to bring impressions, I want to have viewability in that, do I want to break out videos, a separate one, how am I going to treat social, um, do I care about uh, natural search or direct nav as part of that, um, what about offline channels such as direct mail, and what conversion data do I want to bring in? Is it online only? Do I have soft conversions, firm conversions, or hard conversions? Do I want to um, consider lifetime value or other aspects as, as part of that conversion data? So really bringing a much richer view of data um, together to understand and have those analysis and insights. And it's even more than um, how each channel is performing, but it's within that channel and it's sub channels. So it may be um, ad groups within paid search. It's down to the creative level, placement level, site and network level. So, you know, the analysis is much more than um, who gets credit for what, but it's actually really finding out at a granular level what's working and what's not working um, across each of those channels. Ongoing optimization. Um, so, Really, um, you know, some of the challenges and things to consider here is um, organizationally, uh, how does this work? I've seen organizations bring in an, an advanced attribution solution and really not able to take advantage of it for various reasons. Um, it's, a, it's an organizational change management problem as much as a technology problem. Um, so, you know, going to it with a clear view in terms of if we have these results, um, how are we going to use that to drive decisions within channels? How are we going to change what we do, what media we purchase, our strategies and tactics, the timing and flighting of placements, et cetera. So, um, and this includes uh, your agency partners as part of that overall conversation. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times agencies, you know, kind of work on their own. I've got my budget, I've got my goals, and we're going to go do our thing. Um, got to 
if possible, bring them into the fold, make them part of the consideration set, and set expectations around um, how you expect them to leverage this data um, to drive greater results for the entire business. Um, so, you know, it's more than just getting the answer to the attribution question. It's now how am I going to use that data and that information um, to continue to drive greater business results. And then finally, um, this becoming a key component of marketing strategy. So really creating uh, a growth opportunity, a competitive differentiation by making this fully adopted and fully operational, integrating the results into your ecosystem, pushing attribution results into your pro programmatic platforms to have more accurate bids on, um, on display or search terms, um, leveraging the information with your agencies to make sure they're driving greater performance, working with your finance department to redefine marketing metrics and marketing success to help driving the budgeting process. Um, a lot of organizations um, aren't there fully. Um, there are various degrees of adoption and operationalization, but it's definitely um, catching on and starting to accelerate uh, as they take this, take this journey. And then ultimately as a result, um, you know, like I said, if you move the ball forward in a couple or most of these, these six areas, uh, you will absolutely achieve new levels of marketing performance. So let's talk about that specifically, the potential payoff. You know, in, in fairly simple terms, um, you know, when we work with our customers and kind of uh, help them look for areas of, of opportunity and insights and both at the strategic and tactical level, we really see um, five areas where they can move the needle significantly. Uh, the first one is around display. Uh, we really see two things around display. Uh, one is companies are focused on bottle, bottom of the funnel uh, marketing because they're using last click and you kind of are what you measure. Um, so they're not doing a lot of display because they can't measure it, they can't justify an investment. Kind of like my story when I was at Libris. Um, so, Going to full funnel view, bringing in advanced attribution gives them a, a tremendous upside in terms of investing in, in top and middle of the funnel media um, and driving uh, significant business growth. The other side of the coin that we see around display is uh, people are doing a lot of display um, but are not really able to fully understand or measure the impact of it on, on their key metrics. Um, so once they have that view, there's a tremendous opportunity to uh, be much more efficient uh, with those investments, whether it's around frequency capping, um, unique reach across sites and networks, um, different tactics in terms of flighting, creative, etc. So we'll typically see a 20 to 30 percent decrease in effective CPA if I'm display and retargeting um, with a solution such as this in place. Next area to turn to would be optimization within channels. So uh, I talked about everyone's highly optimized based on their current attribution model. Once you implement an, a new attribution model, uh, what you will see is within each channel the deck gets shuffled. Um, what was your top 100 paid search uh, performing keywords may not be the top 100 anymore. Um, and, and some kind of the key insights that we see with our customers there are um, clearly underinvested, particularly in paid search and affiliate, in uh, top and mid funnel opportunities. So, really looking at new opportunities, new areas to invest, um, where we can drive uh, um, customers that eventually further down the funnel probably overinvested in some of the bottom of the funnel activities and, and true you, you know those are key and important and highly competitive and you'll probably still want to invest in those but what you'll see is what's the true performance um, one example you know affiliate was 1172 um, after implementing advanced attribution and it was more like seventeen dollars right so um, really understanding the true level of performance and how that fits up with your other opportunities and from a marketing investment um, and does that continue to make sense. Um, interestingly, one of our customers were not big fans of affiliate, at least from a senior management perspective and you know, we're thinking that by implementing an advanced attribution solution it would help justify them basically pulling back on affiliate and at the end of the day what we saw was actually affiliate was a highly profitable channel driving 
uh, a lot of net new customers um, working in conjunction with some of the other channels. Um, there was definitely opportunities to improve what was there, but overall, um, it was one of their most important uh, channels from both a strategic standpoint as well as a, a performance standpoint. Um, so having that information available definitely can help you refine those strategies. The area that's really untapped for a lot of people is optimization across the channels. Um, so being able to see how channels work in concert with each other, which ones act as introducers, which ones act as promoters, and which ones act as closers, not just at the channel level, but at the, the keyword group, the sub-keyword group, the site placement, the creative, et cetera. So really getting down into those details to understand um, how you can leverage uh, your marketing investments, your campaigns across those channels to drive even better results. Opportunities to move spin from one channel to another to bring the whole thing up. We see that quite often um, and identifying those opportunities. The fourth area is reduction in analysis and reporting costs. Uh, pretty simply, having all your data um, pulled together, having that consistent reporting, having data that you can trust and report on, um, takes a lot of the time and effort of doing those extracts and working in, in Excel and doing the analysis on a monthly basis. So really kind of bring, making that information readily available so rather than doing the work, you can spend the time to getting the insights and, and taking action. And then finally, driving overall marketing uh, ROI. You know, definitely wins across each one of these areas, um, some low-hanging fruit, some other stuff longer term. Um, it's And for most businesses, it's a fairly dynamic environment um, from a competitive standpoint, from a market standpoint, from a technology standpoint. So it's a process of uh, new insights, um, take some actions, test them, what's the improvement, next rev, keep iterating, and keep driving improve, improved performance over time. Um, but typically, uh, we'll see on average a 20 to 40% opportunity in overall improvement of marketing ROI uh, through this process. So key takeaways, uh, simply clearly define your objectives and scope. So assess each pillar of the model that I put together. Um, think about what's your aspired level. Reasonably, you know, where would you like to be and in what time frame? Super important to ask yourself what barriers are going to keep you from achieving that. Um, can your organization uh, go through the change process associated um, with this? Do you have an executive sponsor who's going to support it? Do you have the necessary buy-in from all the stakeholders? You know, really looking at it as a change management um, initiative as much as the technology and analytics um, initiative is important. And then what's the roadmap that makes sense? Um, how do you establish some easy upfront wins um, over time? What else do you want to do? So what channels do you start with? What conversion events are important to you? How do you want to bring those in? Do you want to up your level of sophistication in terms of uh, value-based KPIs, um, adding additional channels, um, more granularity on your analysis, um, et cetera? Once you have a good understanding of that, uh, take a Take a shot at a business case um, for the investment. What improvements would you think are likely? Um, you know, we, like I said, we see on typical 20 to 40 percent on average. Um, those are big numbers. Um, so really, you know, if you cut that in half and cut it in half again, uh, you'll probably make a pretty solid business case to taking on an initiative like this. And then think, obviously, thinking about the cost associated. So it's just not, you know, the technology and or vendor cost. Um, you know, there's internal um, expenses associated, um, ongoing support. Like I said, it's not a one and done. It's a it's an ongoing capability and activity. So making sure you're bake, baking that in as part of it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the questions. Looks like we have about seven minutes left. So we'll be able to get to a few of these. OK, cool. Uh, looks like we have a couple. Um, so the first one's question I hear quite often, um, and once again, if you have a question, feel free to put it into uh, the chat box there. Um, question is, do you recommend starting with only a couple channels and building from there? Uh, definitely get this question quite often, and typically what we'll see is people, you know, they see the low-hanging fruit near-term opportunity as um, really getting a view into the impact 
in the interplay between display and search. So they want to start with display and search. Um, not a bad idea, um, but honestly, you know, it's it's a, a little bit of a short step. Um, it's not much harder uh, to bring in uh, your paid search, your natural search, your, your direct nav, your email, your social referrals, etc. To really, because those channels are actually going to impact display and search as well. Um, so kind of having that two-channel view really doesn't add that much. It helps you justify and improve your overall display. Um, but if you want to get kind of that next level, I would suggest bringing in all your primary digital channels as a good starting point. Um, next question is, uh, how does this apply to CPG and other non-response type verticals? Uh, great question. You know, a lot of our customers are response oriented and I always use the phrase, uh, they have access to fairly high value conversion events. Um, Cause obviously back to the opportunity was tying marketing to results, right? So you need to have access to those results. Uh, CPG obviously represents a, pro a bit of a challenge in that. So does uh, some of the brand manufacturers um, because they don't have access to the true transaction data. Uh, a lot of them will use uh, what I would call kind of soft or firm conversion events. So coupon downloads, store locators, um, you know, uh, recipe downloads, subscriptions, things like that as proxies for conversions. Um, but frankly, you know, not having that re response data that drives high value makes this a bit of a challenged value proposition. Uh, one of the questions are, are you doing much with offline attribution and how is it tying into online? Anything you can share in terms of results? Um, great question. And, and then on the webinar on the 9th, we'll actually do a much deeper dive into the data. Um, but yes, uh, one of the exciting things about this is really being able to drive insights into um, what's the impact of digital media on offline purchases or offline um, results. And so we see that in a couple areas. One in auto is, you know, beyond kind of a car configure or appointment setting, ultimately getting to car purchase data. And what's the impact of digital media on actual car purchases? Um, so so that's, that's very interesting. Another one is, uh, you know, digital media driving point of sale transactions in, in brick and mortar retailers. And in one example, we're seeing about, on average, 8 to 12% of store transactions are attributed to digital media and uh, really giving them insights in terms of uh, display and which display sites um, act as introducers, promoters, and converters from a point of sale brick and mortar transaction standpoint. Um, so, so very interesting uh, insights there. The other side of that coin then is um, bringing in direct mail into a digital attribution model, treating it as uh, basically an impression channel. A lot of our customers are especially retailers. Um, they're still mailing catalogs. It's a big part of their overall marketing strategy. And being able to you know, show them the role of that catalog um, in the customer journey and, and how it plays in that in conjunction with the other media or by itself um, it's provided some great insights and some great value for those customers. And then, um, you know, the last question I have here, and then we'll and then we'll wrap it up. Is <clears throat> I get this question a lot. It's, uh, you know, we're very bottom of the funnel funnel focused. Um, so, you know, last click seems to work for us. And you know, really the question, the value of anything other than a last click model because they're there to swoop in at the last second and bring people to their site and convert them, you know. And true, I, I totally understand that. It's an important aspect of, of a lot of online marketers and they've gotten very, very good at it. And, you know, it's it's a definitely a game of uh, who, who can be last. Um, you know, kind of a couple areas that we've seen with our customers there, one is true, uh, we can give you insights to actually play that game better um, because we can actually, you're looking at it on a per channel basis. So how do you actually improve your game looking at it across all the channels and drive that overall performance bottom of the funnel. So 
Um, if that's your game and that's the game you want to play, then we can definitely improve that. But the other opportunity, obviously, then, is the growth opportunities in the top of the funnel and mid-funnel media that um, currently are going unexploited. Um, then your competitors may actually be doing it. Um, so there's definitely growth opportunities uh, to, in terms of investing marketing dollars to drive uh, net new customers that you may not have ever had a chance to get to. Um, so kind of two knobs there that, uh, that we can turn. Um, so with that, I would like to just take a second and thank you for your time. Uh, the next webinar, as I mentioned, is building a data foundation uh, for marketing performance. So we'll do a deep dive on um, all the aspects of the data required to do advanced attribution, um, talking about the, the marketing touch points, the conversion data, the cost and reference data, audience data, et cetera, and offline data. Um, that you want to be able to try and pull together uh, to do this. So thank you for your time today. I hope you found it uh, useful. And uh, we'll talk to you on Thursday, January 9th. Have a great, safe holiday season.